Okay, so this is video number four. Sorry it took me so long. I've been pretty busy just trying to keep up with the uh, troubles of the economy, working and getting the regular jobs going on. And uh, been a little bit slow on my fun projects. But anyways, um, this is a Wimshurst machine. You've probably seen them uh, on YouTube and you can buy these on eBay for I think around 50 bucks. Uh, pretty cool little gadget. You can see here we have two connectors that you can actually hook wires to. I've been playing around with it, hooking up coils to it, magnets and all kinds of things. Charging batteries with it. All kinds of neat little ways to do it. I'm not going to go into the details of that as a disclaimer. You don't try this, you know, don't try this at home uh, for all the crazies out there. But anyway, uh, pretty cool little machine. Basically all it is is uh, two plastic wheels here, plexiglass. Ow, that hurts. <laughs> These are two pieces of plexiglass, real thin, probably about an eighth of an inch thick. This is just a metal bar that goes around to a capacitor. This is a very primitive capacitor. I'll show you the inside of it here in a second. On each one of these wheels you can see this little tab. It's basically aluminum paint. Um, it's just something to create a contact point between this insulator part which is the plexiglass and the metal part of course which is conductive. When you crank the handle on this, one one plate turns one way and the other plate turns the other way as you can see okay and the way they accomplish that is they simply have a so if you can see it there so they've got a rubber this is just basically a rubber belt and they just they just flip the belt around you know if you take it off Put it on it. You can put it on where it goes straight around it, or you can put it on like this in a figure eight. That's all I've done is flipped it over. It's not really efficient as far as drag, of course, because the belt touches up here and drags a little bit. But other than that, there's not much friction at all on a machine like this. Let me touch these together so I don't get shocked. You can see how much how much electricity it produces with just spinning just a little bit. Okay, so basically that's how it works so that when you spin this handle over here, a cool little handle here, just spin it. So when you spin that, basically it turns that belt on this wheel, turns this plate one way, and then this belt over here, which is twisted, turns that plate the other way, and that's the simplicity of how they make the two wheels turn in opposition of each other. Now, if you look at this bar, which is the top of the capacitor, it comes around here but it has two sharp little needle points on each side they have to be far enough on the plate to collect the electrons that are float floating around the surface of the plate as you crank the handle so maybe you can see that up close you can see there's basically two little sharp needles and that's those little points is actually where the the electrons actually jump from these plates right onto those points and then come down here and store into the capacitor, capacitor and then we'll discharge here. There's a little plate where you can remove it. It's just, uh, this keeps it shorted out so that all the discharge is up top at the, where the balls are. And underneath it, you can see where the wires just go to the little wires there, go to the plates, which that can be removed and you can actually pull a lot of high voltage current. It's a thousands and thousands of volts, so be very careful if you get one of these. I've shocked myself several times and it'll, 
it'll go all the way up into your elbow so be careful as far as the rest of the way this works this side is collecting electricity stored storing in this one this side collects electricity off the plates and stores it in this one and basically when it gets up to such a level that it can't these two capacitors can't contain any more current it it basically they basically arc across any open point um, and make the cool little arcing visual also a cool thing about this is the uh, smell that it leaves in the air it sort of reminds you of an ozone generator or the way the air smells during a lightning storm or when it's raining it's uh, really nice kind of refreshing actually you can crank it up in your room and kind of gives you the sensation that it's raining outside and that's about it uh, well one more thing the actual static I guess you would call these static generators basically you have a bar runs this way on this side and a bar 90 degrees out that runs this way on this side so you can see it looks like an X and these have fine little pieces of wire that just barely graze the surface which stirs up the actual electrons or causes the extraction from the environment and it builds up highly on this side with these two in opposition this way that one and that one and then these two which is a little brush in opposition build up the surface and build up the uh, static on the surface I'll try to give you a close-up shot as you can see it's just a little just little wires you can bend them you know they just basically brush between the metal the metal paint here and the plastic surface which is just plexiglass basically a perfect insulator versus a perfect conductor and it creates uh, it creates the action of removing the electrons from the air you can call it static electricity you can call it what you want but it's a very very large amount of electricity that's generated very quick so it's not uh, something to be played with in a light sense this is fairly dangerous if I've touched it I've actually stuck my hand in between this one at arc and I could feel it plumb up in my elbow it, it, it jerked me around like a little rag doll so it's not I thought it would be a lot less powerful but it's much much more powerful as far as the the actual uh, amount that'll go into your skin you know depending on how moist your hands are you know if you got really tough hands it's not that bad but I've actually got just close to it while it's arcing and you can feel it on your arms and your hair, you know, you can feel it, it changes electrical all around it. So you can do a lot of little experiments with it, but the reason I'm showing you this is it's a major part of the number 10 video as far as the production of the electricity. So I just want to do a little demo on it for you and explain to you how it works. So basically you have one plate turned one way, the other plate turned the other way. This side's just basically creating a static buildup. This side's a static buildup. There's elect this is pulling electrons off of both plates. This is pulling electrons off of both plates. And as it builds up the charge inside, they eventually release here or down here. If you don't have this bar across, it'll always release up there between those two balls. If you have this little bar open, it'll actually release here. You can actually even do it. I've done a few little experiments where I've put half and half, and you can make a really nice, thick, continuous stream between them. If you crank it just right, you can put coils in there and do all kinds of really neat experiments. Just don't put your meter on it. Uh, the, it's so many thousands of volts, most meters will shut down. Um, the cheap meters like you get from uh, some of these stores like uh, Harbor Freight and all that, those are really good to work with with a lot of these little experiments because they're only 3 or $4, but it, it, I think it blows a fuse in those, so be careful with that. Uh, so what it looks like inside of your capacitor, make sure it's shorted out. It's just a, this is a very cheap model. It just, it's just sort of a press-on deal, and it's just a spring. Uh, the spring goes down inside this tube, which is just aluminum uh, paper. I mean, it's aluminum, basically an aluminum stick-on onto a little thin PVC tube, 